sing Holy Spirit, oh, sing come rest on us, cause you're all I want.
receive you afresh, relate with you in a new and in a dynamic way. Come rest on us, Holy Spirit. Come rest upon this family. Come rest upon this church. Rest upon our pastors. Rest upon our leaders. Rest upon all the workforce of the kingdom faithful. Rest upon all our projects and our conferences and our assignments this year. We ask you, Spirit of the living God, to tabernacle with us as we move in this wonderful year. In the name of Jesus, we bless and we glorify your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we know that you have heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. And let everyone say, oh, come on, we can do better than that. Happy New Year once again. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Welcome to an amazing year filled with incredible opportunities. Please welcome somebody. Wish them a happy new year again and you may take your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy new year. Happy new year. And to all of you joining us online, happy new year family. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Happy new year. You may take your seats. Amen. You know, in this beautiful place of worship, I want us to give to the Lord. And as I ponder over this issue of giving, Kingdom Faith Church, I want you to hear me this morning. The Lord said to me, he said, what you do with the first determines the rest. What you do with the first determines the rest. In 2022, I said to the Lord, I gave the Lord a specific amount I wanted in my bank account at the end of the year. I would not tell you because somebody would probably just collapse. But I gave the Lord a particular figure that I, I, it was not savings. I just wanted to see it in my bank account. And to him be the glory. Because 2022 was a year, you know, I sowed. It's not pride. I sowed in 2022. And I reaped a bountiful harvest. And the Lord took me back to my bank account yesterday. He said, I did not just give you the figure you asked. I gave you much more than you asked for me. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, because I want to speak to somebody. When it comes to your finances, you have got to do different in 2023. Because this is the year that I believe the Lord is going to begin to entrust his children with resources. But the question is, can he trust you? And he trusts you with those resources. And so this morning I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, it's a brand new year. I would always tell the Lord my vow. He said, no, Ruth, you decide what to give because I trust you enough. I have dealt with your heart. Your heart is in the right place when it comes to me, you, and money. You don't have a problem releasing it. So I said to the Lord, and I wrote that check this morning. I said, Lord, this will be my minimum every Sunday. And the devil was like, ah! And I told the devil, shut up, we've come too far for this. And I said, if I made a vow to give what I have on my check this morning, every single Sunday, because I have done right with the first, I am confident that the rest is settled. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 8, it says, honor the Lord with the first fruit of all of your increase. He said, then your barns will be filled with plenty. I want to encourage somebody this morning. Prayer doesn't change your finances. Fasting doesn't change your finances. You are going to have to be radical with the Lord to do what you've never done before so that you can get what you have never gotten before. And I stand here a testimony that if you dare God, he will blow your mind. If you dare God, he will prove. He said to you, he said, prove me. Prove me in this thing. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing, you do not have enough room to contain. So I want to encourage you. If your first last year was a five pounds, do a different thing this year. Because your first determines the rest. Let's go ahead and prepare our offering and our time. I am so confident that I cannot lack this year. I am so confident that I cannot suffer this year. I am extremely confident why I am doing something with my first. So that the rest can be taken care of. Let's go ahead. And if you're joining online, I'm sure you can see the um, offering um, account. Do something different. I 
dare you to dare God in 2023. I dare you to dare God. God loves to be dared when it comes to the area of our giving. That is where he tests our hearts the most. He doesn't test your heart in prayer or fasting. He tests our hearts in our giving. That can I put something tangible in the hand of this man or this woman? If I put it in their hands, what would they do with it? Do they even trust me enough to give before I give back to them? Remember Luke 6, 13, he said, we must do what? Give first, then it will be given to us. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. For with the same measure that we give, it will be measured back to us. Let's go ahead. How many of us are giving a tithe this morning? Amen. Can I please have an envelope myself? I am fully convinced that I am well taken care of in 2023. Amen. I'm not talking about the extras I'm going to take from Pastor Daniel this year. You know, I said to my husband this morning, I said, I'm a very good wife. I'm not like, I don't spend your money. But I think this morning I received by the Spirit of the Lord to spend this money this year. I, I received this. I don't spend this money. I was telling him, I said, I'm a very good wife. I don't spend your money. But this year, I think I received that spirit to spend this one. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and let's package our gift. I want to say with all my heart to you, Kingdom Faith Church, God has the windows of heaven open over this house. Don't miss your portion this year. Don't miss your portion. Don't miss your portion. Put something that will connect you with that open heaven and release for you the entirety of this year. In Jesus' name. I pray that there will be no lacking family in Kingdom Faith Church. I pray that there will be, is there only one or two people? I pray there will be no lacking family in the Kingdom Faith Church. That rather than people blessing you this year, you will be blessing other people. You will be doing shopping for other people. You will be being an extended arm of Christ to another family. This year in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and put the tithe confession. For all of us giving the tithe this morning, let's lift it up this first day of the year and speak to it with boldness and conviction. Three, two, one, let's go. As I've removed the holy tithe from my heart. location and service is going to be from 10 a.m. till noon. Please, please, if there's anyone within your spell of influence who don't have contact with the church or maybe the church doesn't have their contact details, please do feel free to share the information with them. The Lord bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say more. Say more. M-O- 
R-E, more. This year I'm believing for more. I'm believing for more. God has been faithful and he's been good, for, so good to us. Anybody believing for more? Are you sure? We're praying this morning, six o'clock in the morning. You know, I, I was saying to some of the leaders, I said this morning, I knew who the strong folks were. Those who came out of the meeting yesterday and still made it onto the 6 a.m. prayer this morning. Some people are looking away as soon as I say that. But you know, while we were praying at a point, I thought the Lord began to release on my heart to say to uh, everyone, the more, the more of God. The, you see, I, I knew I couldn't assign it, so I signed it to myself. All of this week, I signed the 6 a.m. prayer to myself to say, God, I want to go for more this year. I want to serve you more this year. I want to give more to you. I want to give more of the fruits of my life. I want my life to bear more fruits this year. It's the year of the more. Pastor Titi said she had something to share very quickly. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I'm sure some of you were pleasantly surprised during Christmas. You know, that was one of the great virtues that the Lord has, you know, blessed Pastor Ruth with. You know, we were all pleasantly surprised and we just thought, hmm, it would be nice for us to surprise her. So some of us leaders and workers, we got together and we packaged something very nice that to, just to honor her. You know, she does so much more. I, I don't I don't think you can, you can fathom what Come she on, does. let's give it up for Pastor, Pastor Ruth. Daniel, to stand here, it is because of Pastor Ruth. <laughs> so we love you, Pastor. God is so good. This year, we're just going to bless one another like never before. I want to give more than I've ever given before. How about you? Honestly, I, I, one of my goals this year, I've written down what I want to give to God. And I pray to God that he will help me. Every month, I must not give God less than four figures. I must not give him less than four figures per month. I'm going to trust him that he will help me. He taught me how to believe like that in time past. And he said, whenever you believe for what you want to give me, you are challenging me for what I'm going to give you. So I can't remember the last time in my life, actually. I can't remember. I think maybe way back 2008. The last time I gave God less than five figures in one year. Maybe 2008. I'm serious. I'm not joking. 2008 was the last time I gave him less than. As a matter of fact, I did in 2008, maybe 2007. The first time the Lord challenged me to give him five figures. And I told my wife, I said, the Lord said we must give at least $10,000 to share. And from that time, he's never failed. The next year, I was radical. I told her, I said, we're going to double it. We're going to give God at least $20,000 this year. And the Lord surpass our expectation he even went over that so go for the more this year i want to start by year by has anybody read this book that's my most recent book there's another one that is coming out soon um, it's actually a, a revised version of my very first book redemption buffet but it's being worked on i spent some time in the last month to work on it and put more juice into it uh, make it nicer and better and I believe before the end of January, we'll probably have it or at the very latest February will be out. The Lord's commissioned me to write two more books this year. And I'm just really trusting God for the grace of God to do it. Is there somebody here who has not read Pharaoh's Prophets and Plagues? And you know that if I bless you with it, if I bless you with it, if I bless you with it. Now, did you see what just happened? He hesitated. You see, he, he came this far and then he hesitated. And then somebody else says, I'm not going to hesitate in 2003. And she came and grabbed it out of my hands. Liam, I've got another one for you in the office. Just make sure you come. I, I really, I really want to give this year. I just want it to be a year of giving. I want to give love. I want to give my best at ministry. Um, some of you have already heard me share this. The doors of television is opened. Um, 
the director of uh, Faith TV. He's like, he's, he just can't wait. I've sent him one or two samples of our show. We had recorded about seven in preparation and anticipation, not knowing when the time would come. And I believe by the end of the first quarter or thereabout, we'll be on TBN as well. Because I've waited eight years for this. Eight years ago was when God first brought me into relationship with the director of TBN. And I remember then he said, Daniel, bring your shows. Because I'd been doing TV in America for six straight years. And the Lord said, son, this is England. You're not ready. You don't have the structure. You don't have the backbone. You don't have the prayer warriors. You don't have what you have in America. He said, don't do it. I've waited eight years for the Lord to say it's time. So get ready. We are going to get the word of God out there. It's going to bless lives like never before. I want to give like I've never given before. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm wondering where I put my clicker. Glory be to God. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for the guys at the back. This morning, I'm going to take some time to just share with you our vision for 2023. Most of you are already aware of that, that usually in the very first Sunday of the year, uh, my message is the vision for the year. My message is the vision for the year. So one more time, say Happy New Year to the person to your left and to your right. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to the year 2023. For us in the Kingdom Faith family, it's our year of intimacy with the King and... No, that's weak. Intimacy with the King and... How many people are going to do great exploits for God? See, there are a few hands that didn't go up. Let, let's try that again. Now, now I, have to, I have to be careful how I say this. This is not one of those things that is just going to happen to you. If it's going to be, it's going to be up to you. Whether you become a spectator throughout 2023 or a newsmaker, and please don't think you have to be a pastor to be a newsmaker. When I pastored the church in Medford, Oregon, there were some of the members of my church that made news before anybody knew who I was. We had one member. Remember Joella? The chief of police of the city and the mayor got to know me because of one member that made so much impact in what she was doing for the police. So my first opportunity on the platform, speaking and praying while the mayor and the chief of police were looking at who is this tanned guy was because of a member. So don't think it's about uh, being, what you call it? Oh, the pastor, only the pastor can make impact. No, you can make impact too if you find yourself. And nothing stops you from making impact. Nothing stops you. Can I tell you the secret to making impact? Making up your mind to become who God has created you to be and deploying yourself to your world. That's all. If I really wanted to do some name droppings, I mean, I, I remember the time when I was just, just by going on TV and making impact and preaching to more people, God brought me to relationship with even senators in America then. When you make impact, you will meet people. I remember one or twice I wanted to do a little bit of showing off. I put a, a photograph of myself with John Boehner and somebody said, what? You know John Boehner? He's the speaker of the house. You make impact. And you will come before kings and not mean men. A lot of relationships, many of those relationships have not followed on uh, uh, all of these years because God just has had me in the trenches. The assignment for the last seven years has been go in the upper room and feed my children that I bring to you and nurture my children that I bring to you. But we're coming out of the upper room now. Somebody say amen to that. We're coming out and there's no more shrinking back. So 2023 is going to be our year of great exploits. I know many of you already know this, that Kingdom Faith Ministers International is the apostolic parent of these four or five initiatives of which the Kingdom Faith Churches is just one of it. The first Kingdom Faith Church, 
Medford, Oregon was the first one that we named Kingdom Faith Church and then Milton Keynes. And now, interestingly enough, some of you may find this hard to comprehend. And I have two international churches that changed their name. One in India and one in Africa. They changed their name to Kingdom Faith and they said to me, Pastor Daniel, I didn't start the church. And they said to me, you are our spiritual father and we're going to call ourselves Kingdom Faith as well. So I just know this. We've been training and there's still going to be more training. But I know among the sons and daughters of God that has come true, there are some that are going to be sons and daughters of this apostolic ministry. That one day you're just going to be hearing me say, so and so are going to be planting a church in some place, somewhere. And you'll be like, oh, really? So don't say I didn't tell you it will happen. There will be more than one kingdom faith church. Apart from kingdom faith church, we have four other expressions that, uh, again, uh, you'll be seeing more and more of. Last year, we launched our Kingdom Faith School of Ministry. It's completely online. We have, you know, a number of courses that we run already. And for the very first time in 2022, we were able to have international students join our online school of ministry. Somebody say, praise the Lord for that. And we believe, God, that we're going to do a lot more. We've been doing a lot of tweaking and, and just working on it. There's some wonderful men and women in this church who uh, I've appointed as instructor. We have an uh, uh, administrator for the School of Ministry. Is there anybody this year that did the online School of Ministry, any of the courses? Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Okay, so at least some of you did. You were particip participants in the online School of Ministry. We're believing God this year is going to go bigger and better. We have at least three modules that we're making free, completely free. And there's some nations where we've been to preach over the years where they've been waiting. We just wanted to make sure that we kind of get everything together very well. So we run about two, did we run about two sessions or three? We run about two sessions. Every time we run each session, we take a lot of feedback and then we go back with the developers of the online portal to work on it and fix the things that um, need fixing. The Kingdom Faith TV, you will hear more about that this year. Kings on the Mission is the name we've given to our missions ministry. Many of you know over the years we've been to many countries where we've gone as a team from this church. The invitations are open again. I mean, there's just such a demand. Only God will help us. Um, those in the office who work with me see when all these letters come in and they're saying, would you come, would you come, would you come? And that's why you always hear me saying, we need to pray for the missions team that is also praying to help God, you know, help us decide, God, where do we go? When do we go? Praise the name of the Lord. I think I've said yes to about two or three already. Uh, in the month of February, we are going to Zambia. Um, Liberia really wants us back again. Some of you remember when Liberia, a couple of years ago, um, the church, our baby church there in Liberia are doing well. They finished their church building. Thank you so much. Those of you who sold financial seed, uh, Pastor Abraham sends me videos of their services and what they're doing. And there was another uh, apostle who was there the first time that we went that we got into relationship with. And by the grace of God, we've helped him to birth another church in another city in Liberia. And he too is beginning to do well and they're giving us feedback. So these beautiful things are going to happen bigger and even better this year. And the one that we have not yet started that we have been looking to start is Kings and Marketplace, a ministry to business men and women that are believers in Christ. God wants the business people to succeed. He wants his children to be the head and not the tail above and not beneath, to lend to nations and not borrow. So please pray along with me that this year we will have all the right personnel to birth, to birth, kings in the marketplace i don't want to champion it myself because i'm not really in the marketplace anymore i'm looking for god to bring sons and daughters who are business owners who are entrepreneurs that will help to birth this and then they begin to do things like seminars uh, training just to how many people know it's good for us to have business leaders in the church many of you may not know it there's business on the inside of you see this year by the grace of God, Pastor Daniel is going to stretch you. 
There are many people who God ordained you to be business owners and employers. And you've been settling for being an employee. And I pray that this year the Lord will provoke you in your spirit and show you what he has planned for you. And will stretch you so you come out of that place of paycheck to paycheck to the place where you are paying other people paycheck. You know there's a difference between being employed and deployed. Mm -hmm. When you're employed, somebody determines what you're worth. That's why I don't like being employed. I'm done with that. When you're employed, somebody determines what you're worth. When you are deployed, it's only God that determines what you're worth. Anybody notice when you came here today, I did not put a charge on the door and say, every family 50 pounds as you're walking in. You know why? Because it's your heart and in you that you desire as you're blessed, but nobody can fire me because nobody employed me but God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our vision remains the same is to preach and to demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom of God and thus facilitate the restoration of lost royals back to God's royal family, their royal status, inheritance, authority, and the power to fulfill their life assignment. I've been sharing this vision since this church was inaugurated in 2015. It's still not changing and it won't change. We are to preach this gospel of the kingdom that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24 uh, verse 14. When he said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout all the earth as a witness unto every nation. Then the end will come. But we believe that in kingdom faith ministries, we're not just supposed to talk the talk, but we're supposed to demonstrate it as well. So our, our, ex, ex, you know, our demonstration must be like what Jesus did. We're to demonstrate it with healings, with miracles, with signs, with wonders. We're to show and prove the reality of the kingdom of God and the superiority of the kingdom of God over the kingdoms of this world. So if we look at our goals as a church, as an apostolic ministry, I can bring them under these five categories that you can see up on the screen behind me. Our goals is simply number one, spiritual maturity and intimacy with the king, which we're going to really go for again this year. Number two, discovery of our kingdom purpose. I believe with all of my heart that God has you on earth, alive at this time, on purpose for a purpose. And it's more than just for a J-O-B. My pastor used to say, a job means just over broke. Because hardly does anybody really prosper and flourish working jobs. Job is just over broke. So there's more to your life. God has a purpose that you're supposed to discover on how you impact his kingdom. Number three is manifesting kingdom families. We're going to fight hard this year for stronger marriages. There's some strategies that the Lord has laid upon my heart. How to strengthen all the marriages. How to help people who have been stuck in bad situations. Come out of that bad situation. Get things fixed. We've seen God already do some miracles for us this year. There are at least four marriages that when they started coming for counseling they were sure they're not going to make it as a matter of fact three out of four of them i had said to them at some point i think you need to go separate just separate because you guys are going to kill each other or hurt each other or wound each other so much but we saw god with our consistent prayer every thursday morning 6 a.m we kept praying for marriages praying for marriages, praying for marriages those of you who come on the prayer call these prayers work and some of those marriages that were on life support, now they've taken the life support off, but some are still in intensive care. <laughs> Others are on the ward. Some have been discharged completely. They've gone home. But we're not backing down. We're not backing down. We're going to fight for our children. We're going to have what the kingdom family is like. You see how the devil is fighting against family. You see how he's destroying the very fiber of family. They're calling all kinds of crazy relationship marriage. Man and man, woman and man. All kinds of horrible things are going on in the family today. But we are going to set a standard. We're not just going to carry banner and placards and moan and complain. Let's set the example by having a healthy relationship and believing God for a lot of unmarried people to be prepared this year and to enjoy the favor of God, the grace of God, the anointing of God, to find godly spouses 
and be married. There are lovely daughters in this house that God is going to bring them some wonderful princes that are going to come and take them. I'm not looking in any direction. And there's some sons of God in this house. God is going to give them what we're going to pray them in. And I hope none of you will continue saying, oh, all the good men are gone. No, you pray them in. If God needs to import them from Africa, from Nigeria, they will relocate just for you. They will relocate and they will find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four is manifesting kingdom power and authority. I talked a lot about power yesterday. And number five is helping other people to experience it. Let's stay focused. All right. So when we talk about spiritual maturity and intimacy with the king, those three areas are very important. One is spiritual freedom. The other one is praying, growing your prayer life. And the third one is the knowledge of God's word. So you're going to find out that all of these things we're going to start telling you about that we're doing this year, it's intentional. You would say on the calendar, we're going to have loose to leave uh, conferences or weekends. Again, we're still going to continue doing deliverance and counseling sessions. The church office is moving. We have found a building that we're moving to starting uh, this week. It's in Stony Stratford, a beautiful building. Now we have more offices than we had before, and we have more space to be able to minister to you. So all of that will continue. Prayer life, no excuse. Everyone's going to have an opportunity to grow their prayer life. 6 a.m. in the morning every day is what? Mm -hmm. Let me look at some of the faces. Just look straight. If you're one of those that hardly ever come on the prayer call. Let me tell you something. What you're doing is selfish. You're benefiting from the prayers of others, but you never come to contribute to it. So please repent and change your mind this time. Because I can assure you, you have benefited from the prayer of all of those who have been waking up 6 o'clock in the morning every day. We do it every day. We've been doing it every day for at least two years now. We used to do it five days a week, Monday to Friday. We started doing seven days a week two years ago. So please, don't just be a recipient of the prayer labor of others. It's time for you to make sure you wake up and contribute to it as well. And of course, we, are, uh, we have changed the vision prayer 49 and it's going to become prayer 70. <laughs> Somebody is like, ha, Pastor Daniel. Now, the only thing I'm going to say to you is those of you who have already taken one prayer slot between one hour between midnight and 6 a.m. For those who, I don't know if there's anybody new here, prayer 49 means we pray 49 hours of every week from midnight to 7 a.m. Um, every day, every day. So one person takes their shift. The first shift is midnight to 1 a.m. Another person prays from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. Another person prays 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Another person prays 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. If you're looking for a church that you want to be part of, I highly recommend you join this one because it's a praying church. It's a church where while you are sleeping, one member of the church is praying for one hour to cover you and your family. And we've been doing this successfully now for, I think it's been about a year that we've been doing prayer 49. And so the Lord said, okay, stretch a little bit more. Now, those of you who have shifts between midnight and 6 a.m., you can't drop your shift. 9 p.m. to 12 p midnight is for the babies. You know those ones who don't have the stamina to wake up at night to pray. So we're going to work on it gradually. We're going to begin to fill the slots between 9 p.m. and midnight. The devil is in trouble. All of his demons, they'll be looking for opportunity to get us and they'll say, these people just leave them alone. They're always praying. One of them is always praying. While we sleep, there's prayer cover going on for us. We're going somewhere. God is building an army and so we need to pray even much more. Our ultimate goal is called prayer 168. Maybe by the time we get the 300 Gideon's army, half of the church will choose an hour each. Do you know what prayer 168 will mean? It means every hour of the day, one member of the church is praying for the church family. The demons are going to be like, wow, we can't even, they don't even give us any breathing space. Yes, they will not have any breathing space in Jesus' name. And for the knowledge of God's word, intentionally, we're going to continue reading our Bible daily. This year, the theme is knowing the ancient of days. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. And for the HOP Bible study, we are focusing on understanding the beginner 
and the beginning. I really felt strongly that the Lord said, I want my children to know me. And knowing God, if you want to be intimate with him, this year we are going to the beginning. We want to understand who is this beginner. The Bible says in the beginning, God. In the beginning, Elohim. Who is this beginner? And how did he begin the beginning? And why did he begin the beginning? And how did the beginning begin? And what were the things from the beginning that we can learn from so that we can revisit the foundations of our life and begin our beginnings afresh? Do you know that when you become born again, it's a new beginning? So what does ancient of days mean? It means we want to know the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He called himself the ancient of days. Some of you may already know it, that the uh, Hebrew Bible is divided into three main categories. That what we call the Torah or the Pentateuch is referred to as the teachers. I know some people like saying the Torah means the law. It's not correct. The Torah is more than the law. It's the teachings. And then we have the Nevi'im, which is the prophets. Again, many of you may not know, but there are former prophets and latter prophets. Most people only know about the latter prophets. You don't understand that way before all those guys like Ezekiel and Isaiah, there were prophets. Did you know that Moses was a prophet? He had the now word of God. Did you know that Abraham was called a prophet by God? Did you know that even David in his right was a prophet? So this year, the Lord said, we're going to focus on the teachings and the former prophetic writings. See, it contains anecdotes about major Hebrew persons, including Joshua, Georges, Samuel, and Kings. So we are taking that portion of the Bible this year, and we're going to get to know the ancient of days. The one who started a covenant nation and a covenant group of people called Israel. How he dealt with them. Remember, he's the same God. And don't listen to all this trash that some people will say, oh, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. It's baby Christians that know Jesus' Bible stories and don't know the Old Testament. You've got to know the word. If you want to know God, you've got to go back to the beginning and learn of him and understand him. So some of you would have seen that the Bible study outline for January has gone out already. Today's reading is? How many people read Genesis 1 today? I know my good students. How many people read Genesis 1 today? It did not say Monday. See, this is where the challenge is. No. Our calendar this year is seven days a week. Starts from the 1st of January. Last year, we did Monday to Friday. You see, this is how I can tell some people don't even check their emails. It's from the first day. First day is January 1. Did Pastor Daniel read January 1 this morning? I don't tell you to do stuff that I won't do. Last year, when we did New Testament, I finished my Revelation chapter 22 yesterday. If I can do it with everything else that I have to do, you can do it too. So please challenge yourself this year. And really go for it. Of course, we're going to have our houses of peace continue this year. But that we're revisiting the foundations of it. The Lord challenged us towards the end of last year. That what he put on my heart for houses of peace have not been. We're not really accomplishing that in all of the houses of peace. So we're going to restart again. When we restart, I think the very first one, I'm going to have everybody come online. And then by the following week, at the moment, we're going to start with about three or four locations. Because not all locations are quite there. And the criteria is now going to be shared with all of the potential leaders for what it takes to be able to get a location together. One of the most important things is a potential leader is not just going to be someone leading a Bible study anymore now. But we are, I'm looking for men and women who have the capacity to nurture. We need discipleship. We need a nurturer. We need people going to Bible study group because they know that they're going to be cared for. They're going to be blessed. We also want to make sure that each group is at least seven 
at the minimum. When you grow to 12, we allow you to release about four to start another one. But we want to make sure that there's a minimum criteria for a foundation. So we don't just start something and it's not blossoming and it's like, oh, that location is there. Oh, two people showed up this week. Three people showed up next week. The host is available today. The host is not available tomorrow. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that whenever any location is established this year, it's going to be strong. It's going to be vibrant. And somebody said amen to that. Are you believing God for me? I'm believing God with me. Praise God. So we will have 12 locations in Milton Keynes. Somebody say amen. amen. And then we'll still have one location in each of the places where we've had locations last year. One will be in Bedford. One will be in Northampton. And one will be in Luton. So Luton folks, get ready. You're, you're going to be starting from the beginning. Because I think the Luton folks are the largest. That's the largest. It's actually not a house of peace. They meet, meet in a hall. Because there's about 30 people all together, um, including children in Luton. So we're going to go for it this year. It's going to be awesome. And there's some very vibrant ones in Milton Keynes as well. I, I take my hats off for those who uh, did a fantastic job last year. And not just that they had number. But there's a testimony of growth in the lives of those who were in the HOP. I saw the lives of the people change. Those who were young babies in the Lord, before, by the time we got to the end of the year, I was seeing them wanting to go to conferences, reading books, talking about the things of God in a way that I know that they had grown. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, these are the things you can expect from the houses of peace. In every house of peace, you would expect to have bible study on a weekly basis again the focus for 2023 is the beginner and the beginnings you expect to have fellowship and communion the first wednesday but this time around we're also going to have bible study even though that first wednesday you would uh, break bread and have communion love acceptance and pastoral care in Kingdom Faith Ministries International, on the books now, there's about 200 people who chose to say this is their home church. And we realized that more than half were actually not going, or close to half were not going to HOP last year. We want to see that change. That's why we need HOP leaders who can gather people together, nurture people, and make sure that they stay in the discipleship program it's a place where you can get prayers for personal needs and soul winning opportunities there's so many criteria we're going to attach to the hops now for example people no, no one's going to be able to book any pastoral counseling if they don't go through the hop you have to belong to an hop because it's very important to understand that as a church grows we need to have structure in place if everybody wants counseling from the pastor you will kill the pastor the truth about it is the structure is going to be in place so that where the anointed sons and daughters of God in the HOP level will bless you, minister to you first. And only uh, very difficult cases need to go beyond that level to get to a uh, pastoral level. Praise the name of the Lord. And somebody said amen to that. And I know some of you just like to just get with Pastor Daniel and just have a chat with him. But this year, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. So you're going to have to really, really help me um, stay focused on the work. Now, I said this uh, part of our vision is also the discovery and the fulfillment of kingdom purpose. Those are the courses um, that we have on the online platform right now, with the exception of the fact that I'm working on Kingdom 201 and Leadership 201. So we have Kingdom 101, we have Leadership 101, we have Discovery 101, we have the Foundations in Christianity courses, and the Serving in Ministry courses 1 and 2. All of that is loaded. For those of you who have tasted of the online school, the notes are there. There are videos to watch, notes, and all of your homework you do online. Amen? All of your homework you do online, and when you finish the homework and you click enter, the instructors receive an email. They know you've done your work. The instructors will grade it, and they will let you know how you are doing. So it's going to be really, really awesome this year. Manifesting Kingdom families, please pray with me that we would have anointed men and women. I thank God for our King's Kids. Somebody put your hands together for King's Kids. They did a fantastic job in 2022. Uh, and, and put your hands together for our young royals. Anybody see the teenagers? When the teenagers are marching out of the service. But in 2023, we want to go bigger and better. 
We want to go bigger and better. I'm looking for a teenage ministry with at least 50 teenagers. Something really, really just incredible. Um, two other areas that we really struggled with last year was the Extart ministry, which we had in mind. We wanted to have a ministry just for people between the age of 21 and 29. Extart starts for excellent start. I just have a passion to help those who are in their 20s start excellently their career, their finances, and relationship and marriage. A lot of young people sometimes think they know it all until they make all kinds of mistakes first. And there's no use if those of us who have been through those stages, uh, you know, know all the mistakes we made, if we don't tell the younger ones. So we've got to bring them together, tell them how to do relationship. Not all of those hooking up, shacking up, and all this sexual activity that is illegal without marriage. There's so many of all these wrong things going on. And, and sometimes people in their 20s just think, oh, we know it all because we're adults. No. Please learn. Learn from others. So we're believing God. I actually am believing God for pastoral leadership for that age group where we can really minister to you in all these different areas as well as I'm asking God for anointed marriage ministry leaders. Not just couples in church who are married. I'm looking for those who carry the anointing for marriage ministry. And who can minister, who I can trust them to minister to married couples and trust them to minister to singles. So please pray. Please pray. Please pray. God has to bring a lot more people to our church with anointings and giftings that we may not already have. Then we have this issue of manifesting kingdom power and authority. Again, this part of our vision. Uh, you see that some of those things we're already doing, kingdom encounter meetings. Now the 10 a.m. service in a new location is going to be a combination of morning and kingdom encounter. Pastor Daniel, what do you mean by that? We're going to push in the worship every Sunday morning for the presence of God. And we're going to end every service ministering with the prophetic and healing with altar ministry. Every Sunday service is going to end with altar ministry. Trusting God for the power of God to move in our midst. Three initiatives I put in bold there. I spoke with um, the new uh, leadership of the evangelism team. Uh, um, I'm not going to drop names yet. Um, and what we're looking for is not just distributing flyers, just talking to people in the street, but we're also looking for power evangelism. Going outdoors and being able to pray for people, speaking prophetic words into their lives, you know, releasing words of knowledge, accurate words of knowledge that will cause people to begin to tear up. Even if their hearts were hardened before, when you just come to them, you know, I, I see that happen. It's one of the most beautiful expressions of ministry, and I love it, and I thank God for that grace. Just hold somebody's hand, begin to pray with them, and the download comes and you begin to tell them stuff about themselves and they're just wild like how can you know that it causes tears to roll down their cheeks because they realize that the God who created them has not forgotten them and God can tell a stranger intimate information and then you're able to bring them to Christ we want power and evangelism where we are praying for the sick in the streets and they recover I'm believing God that amen is a little bit big I'm believing God that the power evangelism team, we will see people. Now God has given us incredible favor. You see, where we're going to now, new locations at the end of a high street is a well-populated, very busy area. Some days, maybe the worship team will take a couple of acoustic guitars and we'll just go somewhere there and stay in one corner and just sing some songs and just, just attract some attention while people come closer and we demonstrate the power of God for them. With demonstrate, say, is, is there any, any sick amongst you? Anybody with pain in their body, come forward. And then we we'll begin to pray and people start seeing pain disappear. What do you think will happen? Many of them would run to the Lord. So we're believing for healing teams. We're also looking to develop our prophetic company. Uh, there are a few people that I brought together last year. We are not quite there yet. It's just about three people. But this year there's going to be a lot more work to develop more prophets in the house that can flow in prophetic giftings. And finally, all of this is to help other people experience kingdom life. Because after whatever God has to offer us in kingdom faith is now for you to become developed so you can be deployed to make impact in the lives of other people. Now, I want you to take a photograph of this if you could. This year, these are the three different type of ministry teams we're going to have. One is the operations teams, and these are the teams that would make church happen on a Sunday, Sunday basis. 
Many of those already exist. Um, what you may just notice is that the sound engineering and the visual media has been merged together now back to the way it was originally years ago where we called it sight and sound ministry. Because the season we're going to is a season where we're going to be doing some setting up and setting down. So we really need to strengthen the teams that they come together and are able to work together to achieve the goals. Another new um, operations team that we're introducing is traffic and parking. Again, because of the location we're going to, we realize we're going to need a team of people that would stand around the building area and be able to direct people to the car parks, tell them, oh, there's a car park over there, go park there, or you can park over here, and also direct the traffic into the building. Then, apart from the pro operations team, we're going to have teams called project teams. There are certain things we need to get done that is not necessarily a Sunday, Sunday activity. So we're calling that project team. Um, this year, the social media is going to be moved into a project team because it's not really an ops team. It's not necessary to set up and make a service run. And then there's some other project teams that we have there. We're still working on our smart device. Uh, the School of Ministry is still a project team because we're still working on enhancing the School of Ministry online. The prayer line was one goal that we failed to achieve in 2022. I'm going to put a lot of effort into that this year. We need to get that sorted by February this year. Because trust me, we keep praying that we won the 300 Gideon's army. My experience in the last 20 years of pastoring has been that when people are attracted to God, it's first because they have problems. Eight out of ten times, people don't come to God because, oh, I just... The, you know, the light came on and I just know that I want Jesus now. It's usually a low point in their life. Things are not going well. Uh, they're going to hell and high water. So when you attract new saints, you also attract work, ministry work. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's ministry work. Some people join the church within one week. They're already booking appointments for counseling, booking appointments for this, booking appointments for that. So it's very important for us to understand that this prayer line would really help. When people need prayer, they can call this phone number. We have a system in place. Uh, and if there's any of this that you want to help me with, please feel free to come speak to me directly. We have a system in place where it rings a number of intercessors in prayer 49. will have an ability to know when the prayer line is ringing. And if they want to pick it up, they pick it up from their own local phone. Hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I'm on the prayer line. How may I pray for you? And while they're praying for that person, if somebody else calls at the same time, somebody else picks it up. But we're going to set it up for a certain number of days in the week and certain hours when we tell people the prayer line is open. You know what this means? If you have crisis, you don't need to wait for a one-month appointment. Because I, I knew this year, do you know that there were times this year that people had to wait three to four weeks to get an appointment with me? And it wasn't because... Uh, you know, my office staff was being mean or nasty. It was just because there was no space. As far as I'm concerned right now, I'm already aware that they're already booking an appointment for the last week of January. So we want to make sure that when you need help, you get as much help as quickly as possible. So all of those project teams are there. Please take a photograph of this page. And of course, we have the ministry teams. What we call ministry teams, we've separated them because this is going to involve ministering to people directly. It's not just providing a service. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, 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 start is going to be headed by pastor. Even teenage ministry. Teenage ministry leader is actually a teenage pastor. It's a pastoral role because you have to provide pastoral care. So, all of that are going to be ministries in 2023. Please take a picture of it. We need all hands on deck. We need all hands on deck. All of the sons and daughters of this church who relaxed in 2022, didn't quite get involved with anything. We need you. We need you in 2023 because there are people to save. We were praying about three days ago. And I remember when we made a prayer declaration about the 300 Gideon's army. We're believing God for the gathering of the first 300. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, son, go and check again the population of Milton Keynes. And I realized that the minimum data right now is that Milton Keynes is over 270,000 adults. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Some are saying they think that if the data is checked again with the amount of houses built and people who have moved into Milton Keynes, it's now closer to 300,000. You know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, your 300 Gideon's army vision is 0.1%. 0.1%. You know what that means? There's so much people to reach for God. So please, brothers and sisters, don't relax. And don't have the attitude, oh yeah, I'm just going to step back and let somebody else do it. I know there's enough people to do it. Like we're going to start moving out of this building, starting from this week, next week. Some things are going to go into our new office location. Some things are going to be stored in the new church meetings location. We need all hands on deck. If everybody just stayed back and didn't get involved, it would be so hard for the few people who want to make it happen. So I really, really appeal to you, let's step up this year. And let's make it happen. We're also trusting God for those of you who God has already put some sort of special interest or outreach initiative on your heart. So please come forward. Let us know what God is saying to you. Let's see if we can help you get it started. My only desire is always to see, does that person really carry the vision in their heart? And do they have the capacity to do it? Because sometimes you can just be wishing and wishing that, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to save all the teenagers in Milton Keynes. We have to talk first and really see. Do you really have the vision? Do you have the capacity to do it? And we will support you. We will support you to start up this initiative. And when I say support, I mean prayer support, financial support, and human resource if necessary. Because if God gives us a go-ahead with any kind of community initiative, I will announce it in church. And those who want to be part of it become human support for it. But you see why I say we have to make sure we vet it first because we don't want to put human and material resource behind anything that would not last. Um, this next image is just, again, about the marketplace ministry, just trusting God for people to do a lot better. Um, the milestones that we have, you may take a photograph of this as well. Please pray along with me on this. Um, I'm really believing God that the prayer line will be up and running by March this year. Somebody say amen to that. I'm also believing God that Kingdom Faith TV will be up and running by March this year. When I say Kingdom Faith TV, it encompasses all that we believe we're going to be putting out there, whether through uh, uh, cable TV or whether through online um, avenues. So again, a lot of work has started. The video ministry are, are growing. Um, there's trainings. We've already had two trainings done. Uh, my spiritual son in America, Nick, um, has done a couple of trainings for the video team. We're still looking for more people in pre-production, people who have creative ideas of how, uh, what we should do looks like. And then, of course, we have the production team, which are the guys that you usually see on Sunday, um, gentlemen and ladies who handle the cameras and those who are in the room there, the editing room. And then we have post-production. Post-production is going to be editing each episode of the show. Now we can't just do anything. We have to have TV broadcast um, shows to present. When I was in America, I was so fortunate. We prayed so much and God took us to the place where in our church we had three professionals from three different television stations in the city. The production engineer for one of the television stations who came one day to show us how to stream and how to uh, edit. The following week came back to the church and came to me and said, Pastor Daniel, I'm not here as a consultant. You did know, but when you were preaching last week, God touched my heart. I've rededicated my life to the Lord. Now I want to be a disciple. And he's still my spiritual son till today. And he's the one who is, um, I, I'm just hoping that he's going to be able to do a lot more for us. Because he's talking to me about technologies of being able to do a lot, even while he is in America. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's going to happen. How many people would agree with me that before our anniversary, we would have surpassed the 300 Gideon's army? How many people would agree? The disciples came out of the upper room and in one day, 3,000 was added. Do you know that if we Christians are in this house, if we sons and daughters of God, if we're really serious, we can win 100 people in one month. If we're really serious. If 100 of us would intentionally go out of their way just to win one person each, to win one person. I'm not saying two. I'm not saying five. I'm saying just one. Just say, God, this month of January, give me one soul. Please, I appeal to you. There are many children of God who are comfortable. One whole year, 
they don't win one person to the Lord. It's not good. If there's one ministry that God has called all of us to, is the ministry of winning souls. Oh, pastor, I'm not good with the Bible. You don't need to be good with the Bible. Just tell them your story. Tell them who you were before Christ. Tell them how Christ came into your life and tell them the difference is made. Telling your story is the best way to witness to other people. It's real to them. You don't need to tell them a lot of Bible verses. There's no need for that. Just tell them the real story of what God has done. Did somebody hear yesterday when Liam was sharing his story? That's a real story. When a man comes up and says, I was hooked on, on, on a particular drug and says, but God has set me free now. He's doing well as a husband, as a father, doing well in the church, serving in the church. That's a real story. Did you hear another couple yesterday come forward? Some of you may not know this is not a joke. When you see a man and his wife say, a year ago we were thinking of ending our lives. That's not child's play. You, you don't just stumble on thinking of ending your life. Grown up man and woman say we were thinking of ending it all. That's big. Be thankful for what God is doing in Kingdom Faith Ministries International. That's huge. So these are real stories that we can share to win people. How many people will help me bring 100 people to church before the end of this year? Let me count your names and I'm looking at your faces also. Okay. Um, Alistair and Mark. Who else is going to help me bring 100 souls to Christ? How about all of you with your hands down? Ah, uh, Okay. If I see any leader with their hands down, you're fired immediately. <laughs> Glory be to God. So this is real. This is real. Uh, we set time uh, limits intentionally. For example, all the contracts we've signed, intentionally we've signed six months. Six months in the office location that we've taken. Six months in the location for the services. Why? We are going to buy our property. We are going to buy our property. We don't have all the money. We have about a quarter of a million pounds in the bank for it. We have some, something else saved somewhere else. But we are going to buy. God is going to provide and we will buy our property. And we will move in. Somebody say amen to that. And we will move in by June 2023. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. This pastor you have, I'm not backing down. I'm not backing down because I know this God. I know this God. He would do it. He's just looking for his children to trust him, have faith in him, and keep pushing forward. He would do it for us by God's grace. Again, those are just images of some of the things that I've, I've talked to you about already. Uh, that's what our 300 Gideon's Army is going to look like. Uh, we're going to need some gatherers. We're going to need some prayer warriors. We're going to need some facilitators. And we're going to need some financiers. It's going to be a real army. I mean, like a badass army. Just praying, guys. I pray. We pray storms. We pray storms. We win souls. We cast out demons. You know, serious army. Praise the name of the Lord. Just get over it. And that's our building. And that's all, folks. Amen. Now we're just going to pray. We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. First of all, I, I really want to ask one more time. How many people are going to take this issue of intimacy with God seriously this year? Do you know that one of the things that is going to come out of intimacy with God is that you will begin to have a heart for the things of God. See, when I see Christians who do the very least that they can in the church, I just do what's convenient. I just do the very minimum. You're not intimate with him. When you get intimate with God, the closer you get to him, the more you will know why his heart bleeds. You will, when you get closer to Jesus, you will begin to see people like Jesus sees people. See, sometimes when you see somebody weeping over an unsaved, you think, ah, this one has so much tears in their tear duct. No, it's not that. It's just where they're at. Have you noticed some of the great evangelists in our world? How it is that they never retire? Billy Graham, 
before he passed away, in his 90s, was still having pastors gather into his home, still challenging them. Still ideas, had ideas. He wrote a book in his 90s. He did some video documentary in his 90s. Because when you are intimate with God, your heart beats with his own heartbeat. And there's nothing more important to Jesus on this earth than souls. So it's impossible to get intimate with God and your level of service for him and his kingdom not change. You know the reason why people join departments and just drop it and walk away? Because they don't know him yet. Forget all those excuses that people make. Oh, the departmental leader hurt my feelings. Oh, while Pastor uh, Sif was walking, he stepped on my toe. I'm not coming back to that church. You don't know him. You don't know him. When you know him, you will have more stamina. Because let me tell you, the devil's going to come after you. Demons are going to try and sow a seed in your heart this year. They're going to try and deplete the Gideon's army as we're trying to build the Gideon's army. But he who gets intimate enough to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, you will abide under his shadow and you will be immovable. So with intimacy will come service. Please make up your mind. Make up your mind that this year you will give more to the Lord. I'm thankful for the season of life that I'm in. Um, The Lord's helped us incredibly. I'm really, really grateful. My oldest son is, is done with all of education. He's working, just moving on now with career and ministry. My oldest daughter is halfway, almost completed her master's degree and just moving on with career and ministry, serving the Lord. My youngest one is just getting ready to go into university, so I'm an empty nester. I have no excuse not to serve God. I'll continue my first ministry as a husband to my wife, my second ministry as a father to my children. But, trust me, 2023, catch me if you can. Ah, I'm going to run this 2023. We're going to do stuff for God. Because the kingdom of darkness is not pulling punches. Please, I need you to hear this. The kingdom of darkness is not pulling punches. You see how all the wicked people are going as fast as they can? All of those who are manipulating economies, manipulating lives, destroying families. Can you see how fast they're going? You blink before you know it. They will tell you that pedophiles are a protected species. Just the way they say, oh, he was born like that. He was born liking men. One day they're going to say, oh, he was born liking little girls. Oh, don't persecute them. I know, I know some of it sounds a bit far-fetched to you at the moment. I know you're thinking, ah, no, that wouldn't happen. Do you know as of 1971, when I was pastor in America, I knew the statistical data. As of 1971, if a person in America said they were attracted sexually to somebody of the same sex, it was a mental illness. And they were referred for mental health care. As of 1971. It was considered mental illness and you go for therapy and they cast the demon out of you until you become normal. Who would have thought in our world we'll be experiencing what we're experiencing today? They passed another law in this country about a couple of weeks ago. I don't know whether Christians are paying attention. In Scotland, they've just reduced the age to 16. For a child to not need the consent of the mother or the father and go start mutilating their body with all kinds of hormonal, um, whatever, and, and suppression of the normal way that they're supposed to develop, even as far as surgeries. So a 16-year-old can now begin to do surgeries to change her body without parental consent. So if you think the kingdom of darkness is playing, think again. Satan and his court are not playing. You can hardly see any company in the UK that has any backbone left. All of them put rainbows with everything they do. Because they're so bullied by the power 
that Satan has given these organizations that if you don't play ball with us, we will destroy you. I went to my cash points yesterday just to redraw some cash and I'm seeing rainbow on the cash bomb and I'm thinking, come on, you people are all sick. It's like, what on earth is this? Please run for God this year. Please serve God this year. Let the breath is put in your lungs count. The fact that it's left you here. Do you know how many people died in December? Do you know how many people died in the last week of December? Do you know how many people died yesterday? Thank you, Pastor. Do you know how many people died? And you are still here. What are you here for? Just walk a job and pay bills. Oh, okay, make some extra money and drive a nice car and live in a nice house. Is that all there is to your life? Make your life count. Tap somebody next to you, say, make your life count. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you. This is the beginning of a new beginning, oh God, this 2023. We ask, oh God, for your grace. Please help us this year. Lord, you put vision on my heart. I've cast the vision. Now I pray, oh God, for the provision for the vision. Starting with a heart that desires to serve you. A heart that wants to please you. Father, I pray this year that every son and daughter, we will find ourselves not in the old things we used to be doing. Not, we're not going to get stuck in the old. But we're going to go back on our knees with you and say, okay, God, the old is gone. HOP department put that all aside. Lord, what is the new? How can I maximize my life for you? What else can I do for you that I've not done before? Lord, how can I make more impact than I've ever made before? The altar call that I want to make this morning is an altar call for a son and a daughter of God to say to the Lord, I surrender my life to you this year. I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes as we round up the service. Wherever you are, respond to this altar call. Talk to the Lord. No man on this earth can limit your ministry. No man can stop you from serving the Lord. There can be prescriptions of departments within the local church, but that does not limit who you are and what you can do for God. Would you respond to this altar call today and tell the Lord how you would serve him? Tell the Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Father, in 2023, I don't want to be a wonder, wandering generality. Lord, I want to be a meaningful specific. Make my life count, oh God, for you. Make my life count. Father, let it be said of me how God anointed Daniel Matula with the Holy Ghost and with power. And how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Please talk to the Lord. Close your eyes if you need to so that you're not distracted. Tell him, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Glory and fire musicians, please get ready to help me. I surrender my life to you, Lord. 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 Talk to the Lord. Please pray this morning, Father. Take away the distractions from my life. Ask the Lord, take away the distractions. I had a family meeting yesterday with my children and we began to talk. And I said this year, please pray. Satan puts blockades in the heart and the spirit of God's children. We just, we just experience the blockade so we become cold to the things of God. 
we can't respond we're expressionless we're indifferent it's a satanic blockade pray this morning say Lord take away every blockade anything that the enemy has put in my way that may cause me to be cold towards you cold towards your kingdom anything that makes me feel indifferent Lord take it away my gift is not going to waste in 2023 I will make a difference with my gift if it's singing I will sing for you if it's in playing instrument I'll play instruments for you if it's in talking I will talk for you if it's in work work handy work I will work for you when they need to move chairs I will move it for you when we need carpentry or electrical skills I will do it for you this year you have my yes Lord you have my yes Lord you have my yes you have my yes yes Lord whatever you want I will do yes Lord whatever you want I will do talk to the Lord talk to the Lord this is the altar call today Lord I will serve you 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 I will serve you with my life I will serve you with my life finally this morning we're now going to pray Lord teach me how to know you more teach me how to love you you know sometimes I find myself praying that prayer it's like Lord I don't I don't think I know how to love you or be intimate with you like I should would you please teach me you know it, it's like two people who are in a, a marriage love relationship and one has gone dry and goes to this person and say teach me how to love you again teach me how to love you would you talk to the Lord just begin to tell him again Lord I really know that I need you you're all that I need you're all that I need so I'm I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry for intimacy with you finish with a, a cry to the Lord this first day of the new year you're all I want Jesus you're all
the warmth of your embrace. Help me find a way. Help me find my way. Lead me back to you. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are Father, in 2023, I desire intimacy. Help me know, Lord. I need you. I need you. I need to know that you are near. Father, this is the cry of our heart. We don't want to be far away from you this year, 2023. Draw us nearer, nearer than we've ever been before. Help us to be close enough, oh God, that our hearts will feel your heartbeat. Help us know that you're near all the time, so we will not be afraid. We will not panic. We will not have anxiety in 2023 because we'll have peace knowing that you're near knowing that we're intimate with you. Father, we commit every day, the 365 days of this year to your only hands. And we say, help us, Lord. Draw us close to you. Stay near. Do not leave us, Lord. Do not forsake us. And help us, O oh God, to have a year that is fruitful. A year that will be a blessing to you. A year of great exploits in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen and amen somebody give the lord a clap offering and a mighty shout of praise once again i want you to look at someone around you and say to the person happy new year please check your emails check your text messages for information concerning next week sunday I look forward to seeing you all at the Palatial Hall. Did somebody hear that? It's a hall for kingdom citizens. The Palatial Hall. I promise you there are chandeliers there. Not this. Not this ugly stuff you see up here. Chandeliers in that hall. See you in the Palatial Hall in Bletchley next week Sunday. God bless you. Same time, 10 o'clock, one service only.